and we're back on the Now Morning Show, and we have with us this morning the Consular Chief from the U.S. Embassy, Cindy Joy. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning. How are you all? We are good. Thanks so much for being with us on the show this morning. Looking forward to getting into this discussion with some updates and also your new visa policies. But before we jump into that, how has your morning been so far? Excellent. Went out for a walk and I'm feeling good. It's beautiful today. That's fantastic. Looking forward to possibly another hot day. Probably. Probably. <laughs> That's when we get up early. So, so just thank jumping you very right much for in. having me. Oh, yes. So just jumping right in, the U.S. has announced a new policy which stipulates that all visitors have to be vaccinated in order to enter the U.S. When is this going to take effect? And we also want to know what vaccines are going to be accepted for entry. That's the number one question, right? Yes, it so is. let me begin <laughs> um, by going over the new policy which came out uh, from the White House. Basically, all foreign nationals traveling to the United States beginning in November will need to be fully vaccinated and will need to provide proof of that vaccination uh, in order to, to board the airplane and enter the United States. Uh, the big question with regard to which vaccines um, will be accepted, that information will be uh, shared as soon as we have it, but currently we're awaiting um, CDC guidance. That's the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They will determine which vaccines um, will be available. And of course, this applies to uh, all foreign nationals who will be entering on what we call a visitor's visa or non-immigrant visa status. Oh, okay. So I know a lot of people are definitely going to be logged on to the website and refreshing to get that information about what right. vaccines are going to be accepted. So looking forward to that. But one of the questions that a lot of people want to know is that since you now have to, are going to have to be vaccinated from November, does that mean that travelers are not going to have to present a negative PCR test or will they have to continue doing so? Yeah, that would be incorrect. Um, just as I provided uh, proof of full vaccination to enter Trinidad um, earlier this month, I also provided uh, a PCR test. Uh, both of those things were easily updated into the new uh, TT travel class. I must really uh, commend the government. I have to say it was incredibly efficient. Um, I entered, there were several checks to entering Trinidad and Tobago. I hope that it will be as efficient uh, for Trinbagonians traveling to the United States. But basically the reason why we came out with, um, or the government of the United States came out with that information so early for implementation in November is because it gives everyone here in Trinidad and Tobago, everyone in the world, the opportunity to get fully vaccinated. It really is a priority. It really is a priority and you know, as you know, it's something here in Trinidad and Tobago that we are consistently working towards and I don't know if you were able to catch us earlier this morning talking about the fact that we've just announced safe zones coming out and we've really had that push for vaccination from our population. So hopefully that in addition to what you've just mentioned are really going to continue to push our citizens and globally as well to get vaccinated. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, the United States isn't the only country to implement this. Mm -hmm. As I indicated before, to enter Trinidad and Tobago, I had to provide full vaccination. So it's really going to become a question of um, those who, you know, wish to be a part of the solution and and um, those who are, you know, just waiting for the, the pandemic to pass. Um, I, you know, made a proactive choice to, to get fully vaccinated. Um, and I'm hoping that others will do the same because travel will truly become impossible. Um, and I was speaking, you know, initially about non-immigrant visas. Those are your tourist visas. Those are your exchange visas. Those are your student visas. But starting um, in October, which is, as you know, just in a few days, there will also be a requirement for um, immigrants. Those are people who are moving permanently to the United States beginning in October. They will have to complete um, a full vaccination cycle for um, for COVID, in addition to other vaccinations. It's always been a requirement. I mean, we pretend that government and um, CDC or, you know, um, Mr. Dale saying that they're imposing something on us. But let's be frank here, getting into school and, and participating in other things have always required vaccination. So this will just be one more vaccine that will be required in order to immigrate. And that one, again, this is for immigrant visas. That actually begins in October. And when you when the applicants go to the panel physician, uh, the panel physician will explain to them. At this point, um, the vaccines, uh, the guidance that we have from the Department of State is that all WHO vaccines will be approved for immigration purposes. And, and like I said before, any information on the non-immigrant, those are your tourists, that information um, will be available on all of our social media pages. Um, we will be getting that information out to everyone as soon as possible. 
Fantastic. You know, I had the opportunity last night to take a look at the website, and I have to say it really was informative. You don't, everything, all those I's are dotted and those T's are crossed, so everybody has access to the information. Now, well, you mentioned what's going on with the immigrant visas, but one of the questions we wanted to ask as well, um, is the embassy currently processing tourist visas right now? Yes, we are in limited capacity. We have been processing visas throughout the entire pandemic. We have been very responsive to the government of Trinidad and Tobago and restrictions with, regarding, with regards to social distancing and the number of people that can be in any given place at, at any given time. Keeping in mind that the Department of State makes us prioritize American citizens first, so that would be passports. After that, our second tier of importance are people who are immigrating or moving permanently to the United States because that's about family reunification. That's Trinbagodians who are have moved to the United States now petitioning often for their families or someone in the United States that's married a Trinbagonian. That's our number two priority. So we must get them in. In addition to that, we offer up a fair number of um, emergency appointments every single day. Now, the easiest way to get your visa renewed, of course, is through the interview waiver process. And all the rules and regulations on how to do that are on our website. Okay. Fantastic. Um, one of the questions we have to ask, though, is since our borders reopened in Trinidad and Tobago, did you see a rise in the um, appointments <laughs> from Trinis? <laughs> Gosh, that, that is such a, an important um, question, and I really just want to say yes. Uh, we saw about a 300% increase. And so, wow. you know, if you, I, I'm not sure how many of you caught um, even the cast concert, but um, many of the people, the performers, were simply able to go because we made uh, we made those appointments available. So it's exciting. We understand that people want to go, but the vast majority of our cases are being processed, um, the interview, interview waiver cases. And I just want to say, if you know anybody um, that's working at the U.S. Embassy, you really should be applauding them because my staff in particular, and, and I have Trin Bagonians who work for me, my staff, they have continued to come into work every single day. So if you have seen your visa be processed, yes, there are Americans that work at the embassy. They work for me, but there are also uh, locals who work for me, and they have continued to plod through. So we have been processing thousands of visas every single month, um, thanks to the dedication of my, my colleagues and, quite frankly, my friends. That's beautiful. What do you think responsible for the increase, though? Well, I mean, people want to travel. It's there is a there's a, a huge connection between our two countries. As I indicated to my staff last week, I, I got lost once in the mall. I ran into a woman. She ended up being Trini. She was from Togo. Then at the airport, I was trying to get my bags out, and the woman that was helping me prepare my bags to go, uh, she was from Arima. So this idea of exchange between our two countries culturally, I think we're very similar. Um, we have a lot of people that want to go back and forth. Uh, my sister is coming next month. So there are plenty of Americans that also want to come here. And so by set, by allowing visas, allowing travel, putting together TT Travel Pass, I think that these things, you know, then become available. And hopefully the beaches will open when my sister comes next month. If not, <laughs> we'll just be at my house. Well, definitely. I think more than anything, the United States and Trinidad and Tobago, we are family. Thank you so much for being with us today on the Now Morning Thank Show you. and hoping that everything turns out well and looking forward to seeing the relations between our countries continue to grow and just continue to blossom. Thank you so much. We love it here. Have love a good day. It.